All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Steve Sterling once again, and he got some exciting things to talk about, and so we're going to get right to it. You know, I want to stay with the Word. You know, uh, a lot of people and, and ministries get up and talk about a scripture or two, and then they deviate, go off at these tangents, and talk about everything else except the Word, and it gets a little bit diluted. Um, I, I want to stay with the Word. Stay right on it, right on top of it, because, you know, that's what Jesus did. And that's what Jesus is doing, and that's what I want to do. In Psalm 89, 28, in my mercy will I keep for him forever or evermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. So I want the idea to penetrate one's mind that his covenant stands fast. I mean, it's it's nailed down. I mean, it is uh, so strong and held in place that it can never be removed because positionally God has um, given it precedent over everything. And we must understand that and exclaim that and praise God for it. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore. And, and mercy working with covenant really causes that covenant to stand fast because we uh, are steadfastly connected to it by God's mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the only way we can really have rest is to, you know, if there's anything out of uh, kilter, out of whack, out of um, in the area of stress and anxiety, worry, concerns, you know, you know, people need to simply speak to their souls. We need to talk to ourselves. It's like David in Psalm 116, 7 says, return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. 3 John, 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things thou mightest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And this is another scripture right here that goes right along with it. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. So bountifully, God is working with our soul and giving his, us his rest where we're confident of his very best as he helps us pass every test and fills us with zest as we reach the crest, the height of what glory has ordained for us in Jesus' name. And, you know, we got to know that God's astonishing. He's amazing. He's absolute superlative and just extraordinary in everything he says and does. And um, especially when it comes to, if you just read Psalm 139 about how fearfully and wonderfully we're put together by God in secret, knowing all the details of our life from the very threads of our existence all the way through to when he uh, captures us and raptures us and brings us into his presence for eternity. Uh, in Proverbs 66, 3, or Psalm, excuse me, 66, 3, say unto God, how terrible are thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. They have to yield. They'll have to submit. They'll have to be obedient to us because God's power is too great for anything else to happen but that. And all the earth, verse 4, shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee, and they shall sing unto thy name. Do not ever diminish as we confess and profess and as we pray and as we say, do not ever cease from worshiping and singing and praising his holy name. It should go hand in hand uh, with our saying unto God, you know, Psalm 66, 3, say unto God, how terrible are thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves. Shall thine enemies, shall thine enemies. This is a declaration of power. This is a declaration of confidence. You know, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he, we know that he hears us. And we have the petitions that we desire of him. When we say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And here we're saying saying, through the greatness of thy power of God, shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All right. So God's right with us. And um, 
And then it said in verse 5, come and see the works of God, for he is terrible in his doings toward the children of men. Come and see. In other words, uh, confess it by faith. God's working. Come with me and see. See what God's going to do in this situation. See how God's going to maneuver. See how God's going to intervene. See how God is going to make things happen. Just come on with me and see. See, that's the kind of faith that God wants us to have. Thank you, Lord. And again, you know, in prayer, as we're seeking God, petitioning God, and, you know, interceding, you know, Proverbs 33, 20, our soul waiteth. See, our soul waiteth. Our soul needs to develop patience. It needs to develop longevity and get in the thing and, and not get all agitated and upset if it doesn't see things happen right away. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. Help and shield. He's our help and shield. Our soul waiteth. We're patient. We don't rush in and rush out. We stand there by faith and watch it come our way. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. See, we know from the past how God has brought us out, how God has, God has brought us through, how everything's worked out in detail according to his greatness and his majesty and his mercy and his love and kindness and benevolences. So our heart rejoices. So the soul is waiting, but the heart's rejoicing. I mean, let the let your hands go up in praise. Let your hands go up in worship as you're waiting on the Lord. Don't just sit there and wait in a dull, dreary fashion and, and begin to uh, be sullen and woeful and doleful about, uh, you know, having to wait. But get in there. Lift your heart up. Lift your hands up. Rejoice in him because we trusted in his holy name. We know that his name is above every name. And uh, he is in charge and he's large. Verse 22, let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. See, and then we call on his mercy. We call on his mercy. And we just let the Lord know that we're hoping in him and we believe in him and we trust him. Amen. Trust him for what? Well, everything, you know, salvation. Uh, it includes everything. Healing, deliverance, victory, prosperity, all of that. The whole ball of wax. You know, um, Psalm 62, 1. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, for he, for from him cometh my salvation. It's worth waiting on him because he's the one that's going to bring the salvation. He's the one that's going to bring the intervention. He's the one that's going to bring the deliverance. He's the one that's going to bring the healing. He's the one that's going to bring the prosperity. He's the one that's going to bring the victory. He's the one that's going to bring the deliverance. Do you see what I'm saying? He has it all. Thank you, Jesus. And, um, you know, we're breaking the power of the oppressor. And this is the last thing. Well, yeah, the last thing I want to say in this short video um, in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 in the New Living Translation, it says, again, I observe all the oppression that takes place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed with no one to comfort them. The oppressors have great power and their victims are helpless. So... Uh, when the oppressor comes uh, to oppress us, uh, they have great power. And also, uh, many people become victims and are just helpless because they don't have a prayer life. They don't have a confession life. You know, they don't have a, a faith life. They're not used to it. The, they're just leaving everything go and letting other people do it for them. Trusting in a church and writing their name on a chalkboard uh, uh, for a prayer list that probably very few people pray over and you know it's just a mess uh, each one of us has to learn how to work out their salvation with fear and trembling you cannot put everything up on the pastor you've got to develop your prayer life and your faith life if you don't then you're going to be helpless and victim and you're going to just be run over by the oppressor's great power but you know we need to know that god is in charge and he is large. And Luke, you know, 10, 19, Behold, thou shalt tread upon serpents and scorpions. Look at this. Over all the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. And that's just the way it is. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And then um, I guess my last little um, verse would be in Luke uh, 9 uh, verse 1 
it says that Jesus called the 12 together and gave them, but watch this, power and authority, watch this, over all demons, all demons, and power to curse diseases or, and to cure diseases, to curse and cure diseases. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Proclamation of the kingdom of God says that there is power and there is authority over all demons and the power to curse and cure all diseases. That's what, and to heal the sick. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. Amen. And so we must know that, flow with that, and go with that. Well, God bless. God's best, Steve Sterling. Talk to you later. God, God's uh, richest and finest for you right now in this hour of power. It's only 11 minutes, so it's a quick one, but it's edification. God, God bless and bye-bye for now.